In the verses that we just heard read a moment ago, um, John has a goal. Remember the goal? John wants us to land where Jesus is. He wants us to discover Jesus. He wants us to know him, uh, to believe in him, to, to trust in him. And so he's revealing him to us. He's revealed him to us in what, what's called the prologue in verse 1, that he was with God. He is God. All things were made through him. Nothing that was made didn't come into existence except through him. And so he wants us to know that. So today, what we're doing is we're expanding this teaching. See, what John did, John taught what he was taught. Right? How could he know these things? He couldn't, unless he was taught these things. And so John is actually, here, how many, 2,000 some years later, John is our teacher once again. He is teaching us about Jesus Christ and in particular, his divinity. And all that that means before he becomes a man and then after he flesh in the flesh and dwells among us. And so that's, that's what the goal is. The facts concerning the person and in particular the divine nature of the Lord Jesus. And he's expanding and he's explaining to the church what it needs to know because it doesn't know this. How could the church know this? It can't know this. It didn't know this. And so he's explaining to the church what they need to know, which is always the goal of any teacher. All right? Yeah, you know that. Explaining to the students what you need to know what they needed to know. And we need to know these, right? So last week, we covered verse 3, which tells us of the extent, the extent to which Jesus Christ was involved in the creation of all things. To what extent? Totally and completely engaged. The Greeks thought that the, the creation was an impersonal force. The creation comes about through an impersonal force. And now here we see that it was not an impersonal force. You know, like Star Wars, you know, the force be with you. No, it's not like that. The Greeks thought that. In fact, they thought that this force, whatever this force is, was unknowable. They even had a, a god a statue in Athens to the unknown god because they didn't know. They had no idea. And here we had this revelation. Can you imagine? The, the converts are going, really? Is this a reality that Jesus was involved in the creation of all things? Is that a mind blower? Yes, it is. And keep in mind, this happened before he becomes a man. All things were made through him. And we need to know this. I mean, come on, what's bigger than that? Then we come to verse 4. This is where we're landing today. Verse 4, in him was life. This creation, God, in him was life. And his life was the light of men. Now, if you lived back then, George, if you lived back then, you would be really old now. But... <laughs> I mean, you're old, you're old, I know, but uh, you would, you'd be really old, right? I mean, come on, I mean, you, we wouldn't want to look at you, All right? But you'd be really old. If you lived back then, right, and you are Jewish, and a lot of the readers of this gospel are Jewish converts, um, you, you would be familiar with the Old Testament, right? You would be very familiar, and you would be familiar with the story of Genesis, you would know that Genesis outlines six days in which God creates. The world is formless and void for how long? We don't know. Could have been billions of years, right? But then comes the creation week, and God begins to create. And if you're Jewish, you believe this, that God creates day one, day two, 
day three, so on and so forth, for six days. Do you remember what happened on day one of the six days? What happens on the day one of the six days? The speaker of the creation speaks and uh, we have what? Light. The light appears. There's darkness. I mean, can you imagine the, the earth is formless and void for a lot of years? Can you imagine the light turning on? And it happened on day one. And it begins, right? And God said, said, speaks. See, this is why John, in teaching about Jesus, says in verse 1 of chapter 1, in the beginning, he's connecting Jesus to Genesis. In the beginning was the Word. What does Genesis tell us? God spoke. He speaks. He's a speaking God. And when God speaks, light occurs. And so he says, in the beginning was this speaking God who speaks and light comes. And this God who speaks this was with God. God was God with God. They're together. And so John is teaching them that when God spoke and created light on day one, the speaker was God, who's the God who speaks, and this God who speaks, speaks words. But they didn't know that. They didn't know that at all. And what happened on day six? That's day one. But what happens on day six? The creation of a living human being. Genesis 2 verse 7. Then the Lord God formed the man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and the man became a living creature. Right? Then, then the God who speaks, who is the God who speaks class, the Lord Jesus, the Word, formed the man, formed the man. See, before he comes to us in human form, he forms the first human form. That's what he did. He formed him before he becomes him. And he forms him out of the earth, out of the dust of the ground and breathe he breathes into his nostrils the breath of life and you thought you did you thought it was doctors these three doctors let's put them up here doctors I don't know how to pronounce them Cohenhoven I thought Krahulis was tough <laughs> Cohenhoven Dr. Cohenhoven Dr. Saber and Dr. G you thought that in 1960, these three doctors, they're credited with coming up with CPR. They are. No, they didn't. They didn't come up with it. He did. Jesus did. He breathed into this inanimate, dead, dusty thing. This, this earthling, and when he does, life, spiritual life, but physical life, bios, as well as spiritual life, zoe, life, is breathed into this earthling. So John's gospel, something takes place 
in this gospel, I want to... I, I was thinking, I was studying this, I was thinking, you know what, in John's gospel, later on, we'll get to it when we come to chapter 9, we'll go into it deeper, but I want to share with you something about chapter 9, because it's really strange what happens in chapter 9, all right, in, in, and I've preached on this, maybe you've heard me preach on this, and honestly, without making the connection to Genesis, and day six, right? What happens on six? Creates human life. Well, look, it seems really odd what Jesus did. Look, do you remember a blind man comes to Jesus in chapter nine? And, and this is fascinating. He takes on the case. A blind man. <clears throat> How would you like to stake your reputation on healing a blind man. Yeah. I mean, how about if someone said, you know what, I, I'm a doctor and this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to be able to remove this man's head from his body. And we're going to put this man's head on this body over here. And this man's head over here on this body. What would you think about that? You would think, that's, that's, are you serious? Are you staking your reputation as a doctor on being able to pull that off? Who would ever do that? But Jesus does that. He literally does that. He takes on this man's case. The impossible case. By the way, until Jesus comes, no one in biblical history was ever healed of blindness. In fact, Isaiah tells us this in Isaiah 35. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened. See, one of the messianic prophecies, predictions about the Messiah is that he's going to do what no one else has ever done. He is going to open the eyes of a blind man. And that's what Jesus does. He stakes his reputation on this miracle. If he doesn't pull it off, man, he loses the crowd. He loses his credibility. He has to do it. But he stakes his reputation on it. Now, it happened that, that Jesus, this is what he does, he takes on the case, and how he heals him is significant. All right? I've preached on this, and if you don't make the Genesis connection, you miss the point. Because remember what John is talking about? He's talking about the divinity of Christ, and he wants us to make connections. Yeah, so here. So this guy comes to Jesus, and, and, and this is how it relates to day six. The, do you find this weird? Jesus spits on the ground. I won't do it. He spits on the ground. He spits on the ground. He, and, he, and the saliva just falls on the ground. And then Jesus bends down there. And he takes the saliva and dust. And he makes a paste. Remember the story? And what does he do with that? He puts the dirt, this clay, on the man's eyes. And he tells this guy in chapter 9, verse 6, what to do. I want you to go down there to this pool and I want you to, 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 um, uh, I want you to go um, be healed. And he uh, go down there and wash the dirt out of your eyes. And when he watch, washes the dirt out of his eyes, this man can see. John wants us to see. This is just not like some weird miracle that Jesus did. What John is trying to get us to do is to connect. Make these connections. And healing the man with the mud. What Jesus was illustrating was this. The one who creates life out of the dust of the ground is the one who just took the ground and created eyes for a man who cannot see. Is that incredible? Incredible. John is hoping that his class will make the connection. The one who dwelt among us, 
who did the miraculous, who dies on the cross, Jesus Christ, who rises again, was the reason light, day one, and life, day six, exists. He's the reason. I wonder if the class started clapping and maybe whistling and praising God because we owe him our life, our physical life, our spiritual life. Just as an aside, I want you to think about the brilliance of God. Think for a minute, what does it mean to be created from the earth? He could have created us from moon dust, but he doesn't. He creates us from the earth. The earth is our point of origin. We have an affinity with the earth. It's why we love the earth. We're connected to the earth. He made it that way. In fact, some people call it what? Mother Earth. The earth provides for our bodies what we need to survive. Everything needed for life is here. Food, medicine, water comes from the earth. In him was life and the life was the light of the men. And John is hammering hard the point that he is who he is and what happened on day one and what happened on day six is through the Son of God the creator of life his life was put into the earthling there was no life until he puts life into the earthling then we're told in Genesis something else. We're told, this is so incredible. We are told not only how the earthling was fashioned, how it came about. We're, we're also told what he created. What was it that he created? Verse 1, chapter 1, 26 of Genesis. Then God said, let us make man in our image, our likeness, and let a, them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the heavens, over the livestock, and over the earth, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. All the bugs and snakes. Ugh. Uh, but look, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. On day six of the creating of all things, the last day, God saves the best for last. I like that. He saves the best for last. God comes to that day and what he makes was his crowning creative act. So different from everything else. The formation of human life. And what I want you to see is that there's this impersonal act of creation where God says, let there be light and there's light. Let there be this. Let there be that for those five days. Let there be God speaks. That's impersonal. But then when you come to day six, it's personal. God gets personally involved. God is engaged himself in the creation of the human being. Made. He's making the man. And it says in our image after our likeness. He did. He creates humanity a lot like himself. A lot like the Trinity. By the way, this means this. 
we did not evolve from the monkey. Doesn't it? Although someone said, you haven't met my son-in-law. <laughs> or we didn't evolve. Come on. Look, that's why I hit evolution hard. I mean, I just think, come on. We didn't evolve from the monkey. As some of those, I don't understand how they can believe that. That we, we didn't evolve from the monkey. Nor did we come from any lower forms of life found in some prehistoric Pond scum. No one is scum. No. We were created by God. For God. As a creation that is a lot like Him. Do you know what's interesting? Adam is alone. And God sees that that's not good. And so God decides to make a female. And the female is interesting because she's called the helpmate. I'm going to make a helpmate in the original language. Helpmate for you. Help, help. Thank God. Amen. But what's interesting is that God, when God describes himself, you know what he says about himself? He says that God is a very present helpmate in times of trouble. When God created you, the woman, he creates you differently. You're not him. There's DNA that's shared, but you're different. I, th I, think, I think that when you think about it, why is it that m women are more spiritual than men? And you are. You're more spiritual. There, there's, a, there's a heart that a woman has that, that, that's for God that men don't have. I mean, we have a heart for God, but it's, it's different for a woman than for men. Why? Because she's made differently than we are. I'm thankful for that. That's why it's apples and oranges, right? And you make ambrosia out of that. I learned the hard way that candy's not a guy. I dropped a big old four by four on her head and, and I said, oh, it didn't hurt that much because that's what I would have said to George. But I found out I didn't marry George. I married a girl. Very different. So he makes this, this, this formation of life. and He does it on day six. And it's the crowning creative act. The formation of human life. But I want you to, of course, it, it, it's, it's made in the image of God. We're made with, we're made with glorious characteristics. You, you, are, you are a glorious being. You are. And the only way to experience the glory that God created you to experience is what? To know Him. The Creator. C.S. Lewis in one of his books, he said, we were made immo immortal. And if we could come to realize it, we would be tempted to worship. Worship the creature. He's saying, if you could really understand what you are, you'd be tempted to worship. We resemble God. We resemble God, just like our children re res resemble us. We resemble God. The children of God resemble God. Our likeness of God speaks not of our physical resemblance, but more about what we are capable of being and doing. We are so capable, capable of so much more. 
Tony talked about uh, Peter. This, this man who was this and he becomes that. Why? Because he, it's an example of what you're capable of becoming. If this fisherman that smelled like fish could become this, this theologian and have this knowledge and this wisdom, the ability to write like crazy, how about us? Only in his relationship with Jesus does this begin to develop in his life. Our likeness of God speaks not of our physical physical resemblance, but more about our capacity. You know what? Animals are great. Dogs are men's best friend. Diamonds are women's. I don't see that that's far more expensive. <laughs> Animals, you know, you have, you have birds and you have fish, but they don't have a relationship with God. They have a relationship with you, but they don't have a relationship with God. You do. We were created for Him. We were created by God with all kinds of abilities and incredible things. When, this, when you come to know Christ, these things start to happen. Your intelligence, you become intelligent, you become more knowledgeable beyond your intelligence. More, your, your moral consciousness is, is, becomes very acute in your life, morality becomes important to you when you come to Christ. Creativity. How many Christians are the most creative people in the world are Christians? I think the best music has always come from Christians. The best art has always come from Christians. The best architecture has always come from Christians. And the best medicine has always come from Christians. Most of the hospitals are named after saints. Why is that? The best education. And we were created with the ability to make good choices. God made us on day six. He gifted us. He blessed us to enjoy us. To be with us. To be in fellowship with us. That's what God wants. That's why He sent Jesus. To redeem mankind. To be back in fellowship with Him. That's what John wants us to know. Amen? Father, we thank you for this word and we're encouraged by it because we were made gloriously. We, we, are, we are far more than we think and, and through Christ we experience what we were created to be in this world. And without Jesus, we just kind of grope in the dark. The Bible calls that darkness, and we live in darkness. But once we come into the light through Jesus, life changes, changed for me, completely changed for me. It's changed for everyone here who knows you. And listen, if, if you're listening to my voice and you don't know him, or you're unsure whether you know him or not, then open your heart today. Would you just receive into your heart the Savior? Just say, Lord Jesus, I'm not sure I know you, but I want to know you so badly. And I ask you, Lord, to forgive me of my sins. Right now, I ask you, I am repenting of my sins. I'm turning to you to redeem my soul. Come into my life, my bios, my physical life, that I might be born again and have spiritual life and enjoy you and become all that you wanted me to be. Just open your heart to him. He'll come in. In Jesus' name, amen.